Hi and welcome to the channel Budget Audio Review. Now, I didn't think I'd be able to get another video in before Christmas. That's why I left that little animation thing to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I can do it personally now and I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and a Happy New Year to all my subscribers. Anyone who stumbles across the channel, even if you don't subscribe or haven't just been watching a few videos and come along to watch this one as well. Now today, like I said, I didn't think I'd be able to squeeze this in, but I have it's pretty reason being because this is not mine, it's a, it's a friend of mine's. I actually bought it on his behalf and, and it wasn't that long ago, it was about three months ago actually. And he likes listening to the radio, that's his main thing really. And he wanted something just to fit in his unit, he said he just wants something slim, you know, he had a little unit thing and he just wanted something just going to fit in there. And a few receivers, I just even have this, you know, have one of these, I'm not using it, but it didn't fit. Uh, and he wanted something compact as well. And uh, I was talking about NAD, I said, oh, this NAD amplifier, I'll, I'll give it to someone else and I've just bought another. Uh, NAD receiver, I said, you know, maybe you want that. And he said, no, it's a bit too big still, still a bit too big, that 720. Uh, I said, I'm still working on it. It's going to be a little while yet, but it's yawn if you want it. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, I want something now, that kind of thing. He had a little look around and that. And he said, no, talking about NAD, it kind of, I like that, you know what I mean? So he said, can you look out for a NAD 7020E? I didn't know much about it. I had a little look up and uh, I said, well, it's their budget model. It was one of their, you know, their lowest model in the range at the time. He said, that's fine. He said, you know, just try and get me one in good condition and all that. He said, that'd be great, just so I can put it in there. And he said, I'll leave it to you. So I had a little look around eBay and places like that. And I come up with this. So I don't like doing things for other people because it's always, you know, the onus is on you kind of thing. Anything goes wrong, anything happens, it kind of comes back to you. But he's a good friend, he really is. So um, anyway, I managed to get him this. And he, he's had it about three months, literally three months. And uh, he, he came back to me and he said, oh, he said, that, that, that receiver's gone a bit, you know, something's gone wrong with it. He goes, uh, I, I can't tune any stations. And I'm pressing these buttons here at the front. And as you can see, hopefully, they working. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> Hope so. Um, yeah, so they should change frequency there on the side and on the front panel there. You probably can't see it because of the sun, but it does work. So I'm pressing these and nothing's happening. Or oh, I have to give them a good press and finally they kick in kind of thing. And when I come to tune it, that's not always working. So if we press search, you should see that display moving up and down, hopefully. If I shade the sun, I think you can see it anyway. Uh, he said that's not working, the search is not working. He said that sometimes it works and sometimes it goes back to a preset. It's all over the place. He said, you know, it's no good kind of thing. Can you have a quick look for me before Christmas? He said, like, you know what I mean? So he said, I like this. All the jingles on the radio, all the Christmas tunes and all that, you know. So I said, yeah, yeah, I have a quick look. I said, but I'm not promising anything. Uh, I don't like doing things for friends or anyone, really. I, I like doing my own stuff. Because if I muck it up or make any mistakes, that's down to me. I can get rid of it. So, you know, if I get this and I muck it up, I feel like I've got to go and buy him another one kind of thing. And, and it can happen, you know, you, sometimes you do muck things up. And, you know, I've had some past experiences of dropping a screwdriver in a video recording and stuff like that and end up laying up some ICs and that was the end of that kind of thing. And I'm not too uh, familiarised with these IC ones, these little electronic ICs that are uh, doing the display, doing the uh, counter frequencies and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not that, I prefer the older stuff, let's put it that way. But I said I'll have a quick look anyway. So in this video, I'm going to show you some stills, some pictures of me taking this apart and what I found out, you know, what happened to this when I get inside. And I can tell you what's happened now. It was a cracked circuit board. He's, he's managed to press these buttons in so hard. I'll take it that he's done it and it weren't original because when he first had it, he said it was working perfectly. Uh, not unless them cracks have got bigger. It's a possibility. But uh, he must have been pushing these in really hard this on the front here that he's actually managed to push the circuit board behind this uh, button uh, front and uh, cracked it in quite a few places as you'll see in the pictures. Now, I did do a video of me mending it, what I, you know, what I actually did in mending that bolt, but uh, it was so tiny and so small and delicate and getting my hands in there and the tracks were quite small in that, but you hardly see anything to be honest with you, it's a complete waste of time. Uh, I was moving the camera around in different positions trying to do it and there's some fine tracks there and in the end I was written up, the camera was getting in my way uh, and I didn't want to muck it up because it's not mine and I wanted to get it right for him to get it back to him for Christmas. So what I'm going to do, I've got an old uh, crossover ball here, something I'm not using. I'm going to show you what I did, it's on a bigger scale, it's on a bigger scale so you're going to see it more easy. And you just got to pretend to scale that down a little bit to what I actually did but to give you a good idea of how I got this green uh, stuff that protects the tracks, I forgot what it's called now, this green stuff that protects the tracks to make sure you know, if something was to touch or anything it wouldn't short out, that kind of thing. How I, how I remove that, there's a few different ways of removing that, some people use uh, like an acid kind of thing, some people use sandpaper, now I did try sandpaper actually on this unit, I'll, I'll come to it anyway, uh, and I, 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 when I do it I always use a screwdriver and I just gently 
push it away, making sure I'm not too hard to actually remove the track. So that's how I usually do it. And I'm going to show you that using a bit of flux now and again, or solder paste as well to help me out. Uh, and my hands are getting a little bit more shaky now, so that flux and solder paste does help me. It kind of pulls the solder back onto the tracks, which is a great help. I'm getting a bit old now, I'm afraid. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk you through me doing that. And uh, like I say, it's all fully working now, so I'm going to give that back to him very, very shortly after I finish this video. But as some of you may know, I've got the NAG 720, the one that's got the 302 amplifier built in. Uh, and I'm going to do a comparison between the two, but not now. That's going to be in the new year because this is going back to him. But it'd be interesting to see how this 720E compares to the original 720 uh, sound-wise and uh, feature-wise and all that kind of stuff, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, it will be a little bit interesting thing. You know, another video for the channel now. So, uh, let's get on with it. Let me show you what happened when I started undoing this and uh, what I found inside. Right, so let's have a little look inside. First of all, we take the top off. There's two screws on each side and one at the rear. We flip it over and take every screw off, including this one with a red arrow that doesn't seem to be doing anything, but it's holding the front plate on. So we take that off, then we take these three top screws off, which also holds the front plate on, and that front plate will come off now once you've removed the volume knob as well. That just pulls out the volume knob pretty easy. Uh, remove the volume knob, no need to touch anything else, and that front plate will pull off, and you'll be looking at something like this. Now, I didn't notice straight away, if you look towards the right hand side, them six little buttons, you'll see a crack in the board, not apparent straight away, and I didn't see it, not until I flipped the board over like so, and I thought, oh, this is the problem here, this uh, ball's been pushed in, someone's been pressing them buttons a bit too eager, a bit too much force behind them, has actually uh, buckled that board, must have took a bit of uh, force, but uh, as you can see, a little bit more of a close-up picture there. Flip over to the front again, and you can see that that crack is quite visible now, it wasn't, like I say, wasn't noticeable straight away. So uh, we have to take these six screws out and uh, that will release that front board. It's still held in with wires by uh, connections, but uh, it, it just flipped down. It just opened up and flipped down. So that's it flipped down. And as you can see, we can see the big crack we see first of all towards the bottom of the screen in a great big red box. And we've got one towards the left hand side in a little box there. It's got four cracks in the board there and one towards the right hand side at the top there in the red box. Just vaguely see uh, three tracks there that are cracked as well. So these are like airline cracks on that side. If we zoom in a little bit more, you may better get a few different angles of these cracks here, especially this top bit. So all of them need to be uh, sorted out, addressed. Just show you a few more pictures there. So what I've done, I scraped this ball. Now I will show you a video of me not actually scraping this ball because uh, like I say, my hands, everything was in the way. I'll show you another ball uh, straight off this uh, little clip here. But uh, I, I did start off with sandpaper. You could probably see that. Uh, towards the bottom there on the uh, in the middle towards the bottom it looks quite rough uh, I've never used sandpaper before a little bit of emery cloth kind of thing very fine I thought I'd give it a go because some people use it and uh, it wasn't for me as you can see I made quite a mess of that so uh, what I went back to my screwdriver and I've done all these tracks as you can see uh, cleaned them all up I put a bit of uh, paste on them there as you can see this is solder paste I put on there I will explain it in the other video uh, coming up after this but a bit of solder paste there that's just going to make it nice and easy for the solder to adhere to the uh, copper there the copper tracks that i've just produced and there's me actually soldered it now you can see once i've soldered it all it's a bit gunky around around the edges of it all and that needs cleaning with this uh, isoprol alcohol just get the cotton bun clean all around that uh, give it you know a couple of minutes a minute or two just to dry the solder to uh, go back to normal temperature then just get in there and give it all a good clean so uh, i've left it as that i'm going to show you me cleaning another board anyway but uh, after i did all this i've given it a good clean and uh, put it all back together and uh, lucky enough lo and behold it was all working as it should so let's just show me that video sorry show you that video of me uh, doing another little board showing you how i scrape the tracks and uh, apply the solder paste and uh, get rid of it and uh, do the soldering all that kind of stuff coming up now Right, hopefully I've got enough light in here from different angles so uh, my uh, hand doesn't get in the way like it did in the uh, previous video, which was a waste of time. Right, what I'm going to do is pretend that this gap here is a break in the ball. So the track, if you can imagine this track, forget about, forget about it going up around there, but just pretend this track was straight and it goes straight across there to this solder joint here. And we've got a break there, and it's quite a big break. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to scrape off this green uh, protective stuff. Uh, so we can do some soldering uh, and obviously you can use chemicals etc all different things sandpaper whatever you want to use really 
But um, yeah, what I'm going to do is uh, start off with a reasonably sized screw. I'm going to have to get it at a funny angle here to come in and uh, maybe I'll come this side and do it from this, this angle here. Just make sure you can see. And it's just a matter of scraping the ball. And you'll get the idea when the screw, you'll see it come away. You can feel it. It's no need to press hard or anything like that. Not too hard anyway, because you don't want to pull the track up as well. Though, you know, it's quite, it's quite a dear to that circuit board anyway. But as you can see, just with a screwdriver there, we've got quite a nice uh, bit of copper showing through. Now, if this was a thinner track, you know, maybe this 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 you know this uh, screwdriver's got a bit of a uh, too wide tip. It may be all right, but you may be actually taking off the track next door. For instance, if I just show you here, hopefully you're going to see this. If the tracks were near each other. You could end up with something like that where you've got two tracks now showing and if they're really really near each other when you come to solder this track here some of it may spill over onto this track here and you're going to have maybe a problem getting rid of both so if that was the case uh, get a smaller screwdriver where you can concentrate maybe just on that track you know take your time i'm rushing here a bit but just take your time get the green stuff off just a little bit of pressure and as you can see we're not wandered over to the other track okay so we're going to continue with this uh, top track here it doesn't matter which direction depending on how much space you got you actually use the screwdriver or whatever implement you want to use you could find something else that's quite sharp or whatever not too you know not too sharp so it cuts into the ball too much and uh, starts putting great big gouges in the ball but just enough to uh, get it something like that hopefully you can see that Okay, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to warm the soldering iron, come back and we're going to solder across here. And I'm just going to show you one other method as well. Uh, in fact, uh, if I just do this other side here, I just, I just want to digress a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of soldering over here as well. I'm going to join this side here to this side here. I'll show you that with my soldering iron in a minute. So uh, just a little bit of digression there. So there you go. We've got them two tracks there so let's stop the video there right so i've got the board ready to do the soldering across here and i'm using uh you, obviously you've got different size solders this is a size 10 if it's quite a big gap here i could use a bigger one but uh if it's going to be quite a thin one little uh track we're going to you know the thinner the better really for me anyway uh so anyway i'm going to use this i've got plenty of it so i'm going to use this on this joint here so it's going to take up quite a bit of solder here um let's just clean that iron a bit candied here and uh, we're going to bring the iron in so the trouble this leading this iron, it's not very flexible, it's very, very rigid, which is rubbish really, but there you go, it kind of gets in the way, it doesn't do a nice soft lead. But anyway, let's get on and uh, do this. So I've got the iron on the board, like so, and just applying the solder to it, like so, hopefully you've got that. And what we're going to do is bridge them across, so we're going to put a big enough blob on there, so one jumps to the other, going to help it across, hopefully. And... Uh, was that it? Couldn't really see, to be honest with you, from this angle. No, I don't think we're there. It's quite a big gap. Like I say, you can put a bit of um, a piece of wire in between, just like off of resistor or something like that, a piece of wire to help. Another little trick you can do here is just kind of make it run across, which is not happening. So we're going to put a bit more, but this, this can lead to quite a bit of solder. And this is quite a big gap, actually, but you could end up with quite a bit of solder on the board. So you've got to make sure it don't wander over to anything nearby as well. So there you go, we've got it across there and they've joined up. So let's just move my soldering out of the way for a second. I'll bring that a little bit nearer, hopefully. And as you can see, they're both joined up, but we could actually put a piece of wire, just cut a piece of wire from a resistor or something like that and just put it across. You can actually still have it on the resistor, have one part here, the other part there, and just solder it across and just snip it once you've uh, done the solder. But it depends how much kind of like you've got to play with down here, how small the board is and all that kind of stuff. This is quite a big board, and most of these old amplifiers, the boards are you know, a reasonable size. They're not like microelectronics on some of them today. It's got microchips and all that. It's going to be uh, quite tight. Right, on this next one, I'm just going to do something slightly different to this, is that we're going to have to pretend that these are very, very thin tracks. Very, very thin, this track is. Very, very thin, so is this one here. Now, you could do it with this exactly the other way I've just did it. Uh, but as they're so thin, sometimes the solder, you know, it's hard work for that solder to adhere to the track. Um, I'm not saying all, all the time, but it can be. So what I do is I've used some solder paste or some solder flux. Now the trouble with paste is that it's actually got solder in it. So when you when you finish, you're gonna have to clean it up nicely with a cotton bud, uh, some uh, alcohol, that isopro alcohol. I'll just get the bottle here just to show you because I can never say the name. 
but uh, old car anyway, something like that to clean it with a cotton bud straight after uh, you've done it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to dab a little bit of solder paste here. Don't go too mad, I go too mad sometimes. And we're just going to apply it on that track. Now, like I say, once you've done this, you want actually want to clean all that up because that may well conduct on some electrical circuits and uh, actually cause you some problems afterwards. So a little bit uh, keck handed again here. But you're going to see, hopefully, that this goes on a lot more easier with that paste on there. And there you can get very small pieces on there of solder connected like that. They're very, very, and they adhere quite well because of that paste. And you may want to just bridge them across. Um, let's just do that. Some more on there. I'm going to try and bridge these two across. Trouble is this paste, it can leave a bit of a mess. It starts to get a bit messy. It starts burning and going black. Uh, as you can see, it's just clean my soldering iron a bit. This may help. So that's some bridged across. Just move my soldering iron out of the way. You can understand why I didn't show you very clearly on the other one. And the camera's gone flying as well. But anyway, there's the bridged across. And now you want to get in there and clean that flux away, that the flux or the uh, solder paste away bit of alcohol on a cotton bud so and um, we're just going to quickly give that a go right i made a little bit of room for myself i moved that soldering iron out of the way so i can't get burnt by that and yeah just so just dip that in there and get in there quick let it dry you know let it um cool down first of all and get and you can see look over on that bud all the gunk you're removing all the uh, flux or the solder paste out of the way so give that a good clean because that will conduct across maybe um so yeah, so just for instance, if you had it between this track here and this track here, the paste down here, they could quite easily conduct, even though they've got the green uh, covering on there. So just give that a good, I don't think I went up there, did I? But just down here, and eventually that will return nothing on the cotton bud. So just give, give, it, give it a fair, no reasonable amount of force, not too much, but enough. And you can see it's still, still showing up signs of, of gunk on there so we're just going to dip a bit more in there and there you go that's showing up now just do the other end as well it's still quite wet that board oh no still some on there may just take a bit of time but give that a good clean may need a third bud so we'll bring our third bud in we want to get rid of it all And we've got very little on there now. So there you go. That is uh, clean now. What you can also do if you, you know, a little bit sceptical, you still see some bits, is just run a very thin point or sh uh, screwdriver, something like in between the tracks, just gent, you know, in between them and give them a little scrape, not too hard, just to remove any that's still there. But uh, these cotton buds usually get rid of it. If you do it, reasonably straight away within a few minutes of actually uh, doing the joint. So that's that board uh, now done. Um, just showing you two ways, well, you know, two ways, I suppose, of uh, joining up uh, a cracked board as I did in that NAD uh, receiver. Okay, so uh, hopefully you found that a little bit helpful. Maybe if uh, you uh, come across some cracked boards, I mean, it can happen. I mean, people drop these things. Uh, I think we had a CD player that someone must have just dropped and the, the weight of that circuit board, and some of these circuit boards are just held in by one screw, well, say one screw, one screw each corner, right on the corner of the board, and when you drop it, oops, literally, when you drop the unit, uh, the weight of the components on that board just put a little bit of stress on the uh, circuit board, and sometimes crack it, it can get a sudden jolt, and it can crack, and it can get brittle with age as well, and it won't take a lot to crack it, so um, it's something to look out for, you know, if it's been roughly treated, or some buttons or switches are nearby, I mean, you can turn the switch sometimes, and where the switch is connected to the board, it could just be rattling a little bit, and over time, just enough to obviously get a dry joint as well, but uh, just to crack the board, get some airline cracks, that could cause you a problem, and uh, make things a bit intermittent, sometimes work, and sometimes don't. So anyway, uh, once again, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for watching the channel. It's really, really appreciated. And uh, I'll see you all in the new year.